This, these two graphs show uh, the world supply of oil. Uh, the, the graph on the left shows uh, where oil the oil is. Uh, Two-thirds of it is in the Middle East, ten times as much as in South and Central America, ten times as much as in Africa, ten times as much as in the former Soviet Union, North America, and so on. It's the only player in town. The Middle East is all that counts. No, nobody else really matters. The right-hand uh, curve sh uh, graphs show uh, where the known reserves of oil are. Uh, and in the year 2001, the known reserves amounted to just over a trillion barrels. The, the unit is a, is a thousand, uh, thousand million barrels. There are a thousand of those, so that's a trillion. So they were just over a trillion barrels in the ground waiting to be pumped out. Plenty of oil, nothing to worry about. But that's the wrong way of looking at it, as we'll soon see. Uh, Marion King Hubbard was a geologist. In the 1950s, he made a prediction that U.S. oil production would peak uh, around 1970. He was virtually laughed out of the profession for making such an absurd prediction. Everybody knew that oil would go on forever. Uh, <clears throat> but when uh, the time came, uh, this, these curves show uh, Hubbard's prediction in red and the actual data points in black, and you can see that he was right on. So he predicted the peak in U.S. oil production, and uh, the U.S. had to look elsewhere for oil, and we've been looking elsewhere ever since. These graphs show the uh, total reserves of oil uh, on the left-hand graph and annual discoveries and production of oil in the right-hand graph. On the left-hand graph, you can see that there's a discontinuity, a big rise in OPEC-based oil in the middle 1980s. Uh, if you look at the right-hand graph, though, you'll see that there were no important discoveries in OPEC countries in the late 1980s. And so that oil came from somewhere else. What it came from was a change in the OPEC quota rules of how much oil you could drill uh, depending on how much oil you had in reserve. And the reserves increased as if by magic overnight. Uh, that is not geological oil. That's political oil uh, in those reserve numbers. The curve on the, on the right shows the uh, discoveries of oil, and it peaks around 1960. You can see, if you close your eyes a little bit, that it peaks around 1960. Uh, on the same graph, there is a curve showing production of oil, and the production of oil keeps it going up. Uh, it crossed over the discovery rate around 1980, and for the past 25 years, we've been using oil faster than we've been discovering it. That means that the reserves should be going down, but if you look back on the left-hand side, you can see that the reserves always increase. Uh, uh, once again, political, not um, geological oil. In any case, the data on the right are the kind of data for the world that Hubbard had for the United States when he made his prediction in 1954. Uh, and so we should be able to predict when the worldwide Hubbard's peak will occur. Uh, that's been done by many people. Here is one of the predictions. Uh, it, the, the, upper, the uppermost curve is the same as the curve you saw in the previous graph. Um, and the lower curves are partials that add up to the upper curve. Uh, it shows a peak around 1972 and a decrease after that. That, that was an embargo by the uh, Arab countries uh, in consequence of the fact that the American oil had started to run out. Um, that came back again, but then uh, there's another peak around 1979. That was the Iranian Revolution. Um, the prediction uh, that I spoke of is, under the, is the underlying curve, and it predicts a maximum right about now, as you can see. This, was pu this prediction was published in 1998 in Scientific American. Uh, you have to use caution in evaluating any particular prediction like that. For, for one thing, they used for the total amount of oil that nature ever made for us, 1.8 trillion barrels. Looking at the data today, I would say that 2 trillion barrels is more like it, is more, more, a more accurate guess, and that might put off the peak by a few years. Uh, technology, new technology is the equivalent of new discovery. It makes more oil available, so that pushes off the peak as well. The increasing price 
an increase of price when the oil starts to get scarce makes more oil available because more technology can be applied. Uh, and that helps, it tends to push off the peak. Uh, the reserve numbers on which all of this is based are very soft, as we've already seen. And so that, that's reason for skepticism. But nevertheless, the basic idea is right. The basic idea is that the amount of oil available will start at zero, reach a maximum, and never exceed that maximum and come down from there. Uh, Aaron showed us a curve for the worldwide extraction of oil that implies that the maximum has already occurred. Uh, I don't know whether it has or not, but it will occur. So the basic idea of this is right. Kenneth LeFaze, who is an oil man, uh, said that he found out that Hubbard had been right and that the United States had peaked when he read a single line in the San Francisco Chronicle in 1971. The Texas Railroad Commission announced 100% allowable for next month. Uh, you have to be an oil man to appreciate what that meant. The Texas Railroad Commission was the quaintly named cartel that governed the supply of oil uh, in the United States by, by governing the supply of oil in Texas. When it announced 100% allowable, it was announcing that the Texans could, uh, could pump flat out. It had lost control of the market because it was no longer governing the supply. Ever since reading that, <clears throat> I've thought that the worldwide supply of oil would, would have a similar maximum when the Saudis uh, started pumping flat out, when the Saudis no longer had any excess capacity because the Saudis had been manipulating the worldwide price of oil for, for many years uh, in a way analogous to the way the Texas Railroad Commission manipulated the price in the United States. February 24, 2004, the New York Times uh, announced that exactly that had happened. Um, forecast of rising oil demand challenges tired Saudi fields by Jeff Gerth. The country's oil fields now are in decline, promoting, uh, prompting industry and government officials to raise serious questions about whether the kingdom will be able to satisfy the world's thirst for oil in coming years. Now, this was a New York Times article, so it was very long, and it was written in a style in which each paragraph contradicted the previous paragraph. <clears throat> That's called balanced reporting. So somewhere further along in the article, it says, uh, some economists are optimistic that oil, if oil prices rise high enough, advanced recovery techniques will be applied, <coughs> averting supply problems. But it takes it back in the very next paragraph by saying, but privately, some Saudi oil officials are less sanguine, and so on. That was on February 24th, 2004. More recently, the Times has had a, a different story. On March 5th, 2007, it had uh, a story saying oil innovations pump uh, new life into old wells. Uh, many oil executives say that peak oil theorists fail to take account uh, the way that sophisticated technology combined with higher prices makes searching for new oil more affordable. Uh, typically, oil companies can only produce uh, one barrel for every three that they find. This represents a tremendous opportunity well, uh, all of this is true to some extent and not true uh, in the larger sense because we will run out of oil. It took 100 million years for the earth and the sun to produce the oil that we have. We've used it up in 100 years. Uh, we've used up at least half of it in 100 years. The peak occurs when at about the halfway point. We're at the halfway point with, with 2 trillion barrels to begin with and 1 trillion barrels left. Uh, and so we will see uh, the, the effects of the peak very soon. Uh, how soon, I don't know. It's possible that we're already seeing it with the increasing price of oil. It's possible that we're not seeing it yet, uh, that it'll be off another five or 10 or tw even 20 years. 20 years is nothing on the scale of human history. Uh, it's a lot, we or our children or our grandchildren are in for some very difficult times. So who, who needs oil? Well, um, petrochemicals. There are six and a half billion people living on the planet today, largely as a consequence of something called the Green Revolution, which occurred in the second half of the 20th century. The Green Revolution consisted largely of fertilizing fields with petrochemicals. I don't think that the world could sustain the six and a half billion people it has today, much less the 10 billion people expected by the middle of the century uh, without oil, uh, but we're going to run out of oil. <clears throat> 